Welcome to the Deep Dive. Today we're looking at Bloom Energy's uh, really phenomenal Q3 2025 earnings. AI infrastructure seems to be just lighting a fire under them. Yeah, absolutely. Our mission today is to dig into why, what's behind these record numbers. It's about the strategy, the partnerships, and uh, the tech that makes them so crucial for on-site power now. Okay, let's hit those headline results first, because wow. Revenue was $519 million for Q3. Yeah, $519 million. That's a 57% jump year over year. And get this, it's their fourth straight quarterly record. Blew right past what analysts expected, around what, $428 million. Way past it. Right. And, you know, this isn't just a small beat. It signals that this shift they've been talking about with AI data centers needing their own power source fast, it's happening even quicker than maybe have thought. The market certainly thinks so. The stock's up over 410% in 2025 alone. Well, yeah, investors see that inflection point, you know, moving from spending big on CapEx to actually scaling up and seeing the benefits flow through. And that flows right into profitability. They actually made money this quarter, non-GAAP. Positive 15 cents per share, reversing a small loss from last year. Right. Now, okay, it is non-GAAP. We always have to mention that. It excludes things like stock compensation. Mm. Is this profitability, you know, truly sustainable yet when we think about GAAP? That's always the fair question, isn't it? There's still a gap, sure. But the non-GAAP figures, they matter because they show the core operation is working efficiently. Look at the non-GAAP operating income. Okay jumped to $46.2 million. Last year, it was only $8.1 million. And adjusted EBITDA, $59 million, up from $21 million. Huge jumps. Huge. That kind of EBITDA growth tells you the scale from these big AI deals is finally you know, kicking in. The machines are starting to hum profitably, as they say. So the underlying engine is efficient now they've hit scale. Exactly. And you see it in the margins, too. Yeah. Non-GAAP gross margin climbed over 500 basis points uh, to 30.4%. Pretty healthy. Very healthy. Product margins are even higher, almost 36%. And their service business, which gives them that nice recurring revenue, seventh profitable quarter in a row. So it's discipline across the board. Okay, so looking ahead now, management sounds incredibly confident. They're basically saying fiscal 25 will beat their previous guidance. Yeah, they're bullish. And they're backing it up with serious commitments to scale. Doubling manufacturing capacity. Doubling? To what level? To gigawatts by the end of December 2026. And the key thing is their math. They figure that 2GGW supports about four times their current annual revenue for 2025. So they're building way ahead of demand. They explicitly said they don't want to be the bottleneck for AI growth. Plus, they're sticking to their plan for double-digit cost reductions on the product each year, which they've done for like a decade. Betting big on scale, driving down costs. Absolutely. Okay, so massive scaling, strong financials. It all seems tied to this AI infrastructure boom. How are they actually translating that capacity into deals? Yeah. Well, the CEO pointed to three big tailwinds. First, just the sheer volume of AI projects needing power. Second, governments prioritizing the AI race, which actually helps cut red tape for on-site power. Interesting. So regulation is actually helping, in a way. In this case, yes, speeding things up compared to waiting for the grid. And third is their own rapid innovation. Right. And the huge news there has to be that Brookfield partnership. Five billion dollars sounds enormous. What's the real structure there? Yeah, the structure is way more important than just the big number. It makes Bloom the preferred on-site provider for Brookfield's huge global portfolio data centers, corporate sites, everything. Preferred provider across a trillion dollar portfolio. Exactly. But here's the crucial part. It solves the money problem. Most of these deals are power purchase agreements, PPAs. Okay, break down PPA quickly for listeners who aren't in infrastructure finance. Why is that key? Sure. So a PPA means Bloom isn't just selling a fuel cell box. They're selling the power over, say, 10, 15, 20 years. Brookfield, with its, you know, deep pockets, buys that power. Ah, so Brookfield puts up most of the upfront cash for the project. Precisely. Bloom avoids needing billions in capital for deployment. Management said Bloom only puts in small equity contributions for specific projects. Very capital efficient for Bloom while locking in huge long-term deals. That's smart. Scale without breaking the bank. And these aren't just future plans, right? Projects are happening. Yeah, Brookfield's apparently going to announce a Bloom-powered AI data center in Europe by year-end. Plus, Bloom's got this lighthouse customer strategy going in, like seven different AI areas. Think Oracle, Amazon, AWS, and AEP, both Equinix. Corviv. So they're embedded across the whole ecosystem. Right. Not just betting on one horse. Let's talk speed, because time to power is everything for AI. 
That Oracle story seemed pretty telling. Oh, absolutely. It's the perfect example. They promised Oracle power for an AI factory in 90 days, mm -hmm. already fast. Delivered yeah. it in 55 days. 55? That's that's incredibly fast for major power infrastructure. It really is. And that's a massive selling point against waiting potentially years for a grid connection. And we're seeing them expand geographically too, right? It used to be mostly like high cost California. Now it's Midwest, Texas, Europe, Asia, places where traditional power is cheaper. What's the tech edge allowing that? Well, part of it is just sheer improvement. The CEO made this comparison like Moore's law. Their fuel cells deliver uh, 10 times more power in the same physical space as 10 years ago. Wow. But the fundamental shift, the big one, is data center architecture itself moving towards DC power, direct current. Right, the 800 volt DC push. Explain why that's happening and why it matters for Bloom. This is key if you're building AI stuff. It boils down to density. These new AI chips, like NVIDIA's latest, are incredibly power hungry. You're going from maybe 13 kilowatts per rack to five, even 10 times that amount. So you need more power in the same space. Exactly. And pushing that much power efficiently requires higher voltage, 800 volts. DC is becoming the standard. If you try to do that with traditional AC power from the grid, you have to convert it multiple times down to the DC the chips use. And every conversion step loses energy as heat. Right, which means wasted electricity, wasted money, and massive cooling costs. Cooling is often the biggest operating expense in these dense data centers. Okay, so how does Bloom fit in? Bloom's technology, their solid state fuel cells, they're natively DC. They're designed to output that 800 volt DC power directly. No messy, inefficient conversion steps. Ah, so they bypass the whole AC to DC conversion loss and heat problem. Exactly. Legacy stuff like turbines or engines, they're AC based. They need all that extra conversion gear, which costs money, takes up space and creates heat. Bloom avoids all that. And solid state sounds more reliable than say a spinning turbine or engine. It generally is fewer moving parts, lower maintenance, more inherent stability. Plus, Bloom operates cleanly, no local air pollution like combustion engines, yeah. and they don't need big battery banks for backup power on critical loads because the fuel cells are so stable. Future-proofing, too. Yeah, they're designed to integrate carbon capture tech down the line. And that's a big deal, especially in Europe, I imagine. Huge. That ability to bolt on carbon capture and run natural gas with almost net zero emissions, that's opening doors in Europe where regulations are tight. Other combustion tech just can't easily meet those standards. It gives Bloom a serious leg up there. Okay, so let's wrap this deep dive. The picture seems pretty clear. Bloom Energy is hitting record financials quarter after quarter because they've perfectly aligned their strategy, like that clever Brickfield deal and their core technology, with the massive urgent power needs of the AI revolution, especially this shift to efficient DC power. Right. And if you want one final thought, think about recent policy talk in the U.S. The Energy Secretariat was pushing regulators, FERC, to speed up grid connection approvals for data centers down to maybe 60 days. Which sounds like it might hurt on-site power providers like Bloom, maybe? Faster grid access? You'd think so initially, but look closer at why they're pushing. The whole discussion admitted we're entering an era of bring your own power, BYOP. Bring your own power. Yeah. Because even if the grid gets faster, these multi-billion dollar AI clusters, they need absolutely guaranteed 100% reliable power. They cannot afford grid blackouts or brownouts or curtailments. The calculations are too critical. Ah, uh, so even a faster grid doesn't solve the resilience issue for AI. Precisely. So that policy push, ironically, reinforces the need for dependable on-site power like Bloom's. It validates their whole model for mission critical loads in the long run. The grid is necessary, but for the most demanding stuff, BYOP is becoming essential. Fascinating. So the future really might be distributed power driven by AI's needs. Yeah. That's a great point to end on. Thanks for breaking all that down. My pleasure. Always interesting stuff. And thank you for joining us for the deep dive. We'll get you next time.